Hey guys, we are the Study Buddies. Welcome back to our channel. In today's video of Biology Edition, we will be learning about the third biomolecule, which is proteins. Oftentimes in biology, we hear that structure of a component relates to its function. Protein is a very good example for that. Proteins are of great importance to structure and function. Usually, we hear that protein help to build muscles and repair tissue, but there's more to that. Some of the functions of proteins are Proteins help in metabolism. Enzymes are a type of protein that bring reactants together, increasing the rate of biochemical reactions in the cell, such as respiration and also digestion. Secondly, some proteins have structural function. For example, keratin makes up hair and nails, while collagen gives strength to ligaments, tendons and also skin. Next, the role of transport is played by channel and carrier proteins in the plasma membrane by regulating the entry and exit of substances. Hemoglobin is also a complex protein that transports oxygen to tissues and cells. Proteins also play their role in defense. Antibodies are proteins of our immune system that bind and prevent antigens from destroying our body cells. Next, protein-based hormones influence and regulate cellular behavior. For example, the hormone insulin regulates glucose level in one's blood. Last but not least, contractile proteins such as actins and myosin allow muscle contraction for movement. Next, let's look at the monomers or building blocks of protein which are Amino acids Polypeptides are long chains of amino acids linked by a covalent bond called peptide bond. These polypeptides need to be folded in a particular way to become the protein that we need. So basically we have 20 different types of amino acids commonly found in nature. Some of them can be non-polar, polar, positively charged or negatively charged. This is the general structure of an amino acid. An amino acid should have what we call an alpha carbon in the center attached to an amino group and also carboxyl group. But what makes the amino acid different from each other is the side chain or what we call the R group. Amino acids differ according to their particular R group. These R groups range in complexity from a single hydrogen atom to complicated ring compounds. So what you're looking here is three examples of amino acids, namely lysine, valine, and phenylalanine. As you can see, all three amino acids have an alpha carbon in the center attached to an amino group and also carboxyl group at either ends. But what makes them different from each other is, yes, you guessed it, is their R groups. Just like any other biomolecule, proteins can also be synthesized and degraded. In the dehydration or synthesis reaction, two amino acids combine together where a hydroxyl group from one amino acid and hydrogen atom in another amino acid is removed to form one molecule of water. Following that, a peptide bond is formed between the two amino acids forming what we call a dipeptide. The hydrolysis or degradation reaction on the other hand is exactly the reverse reaction where one peptide combines with one molecule of water, forming two amino acids by breaking the peptide bond. Now, let's talk about the shapes of protein. Proteins may have up to four levels of structural organization, namely primary structure, secondary structure, tertiary structure, and quaternary structure. Firstly, let's look at the primary structure of protein. The primary structure of protein is the linear sequence of amino acids. As you can see in the diagram, each amino acid is arranged side by side with another amino acid. Just imagine that each amino acid is an alphabet used to create a word. Changing even one alphabet can give us a new word. Therefore, changing any one amino acid sequence can produce a whole new protein. This sequence is actually determined by the information in our genes which are a part of DNA of the cell. Long chains of this primary structure then creates a polypeptide chain. 
as for the secondary structure, it starts to occur when polypeptide chains coil or fold in a particular way. Basically, we have two types of this secondary structure, which are the alpha helix and beta sheet. Each polypeptide can have multiple alpha helixes and beta pleated sheets. The spiral shape of alpha helixes and pleated folding of beta sheets are supported by the hydrogen bonding between amino acid chains. Some of the examples of secondary structure protein would be keratin protein in hair and also silk protein in spiderwebs. In the tertiary structure is when polypeptide chains start to show three-dimensional shapes. Polypeptides tend to ball up into globular structures. This occurs mainly because non-polar amino acids in the polypeptide tend to group together in the interior side of the protein away from the watery environment, while polar hydrophilic and ionic amino acids tend to orient themselves towards the protein surface where they are near to the water. The interaction of hydrogen, ionic and covalent bonds occur between the R groups in the polypeptide chain to stabilize the protein structure. Most enzymes are examples of globular or tertiary level protein. Last but not least, we have the quaternary structure of proteins. This type of protein have more than one type of polypeptide chain in it. A very common example of quaternary protein would be hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a quaternary protein with four polypeptides in it. Each polypeptide would have primary, secondary and tertiary structures in that. This is a much clearer picture of a hemoglobin molecule. As you can see, there are four different types of polypeptides in the hemoglobin molecule. As I mentioned earlier, the function of a protein is directly associated with its three-dimensional structure. The main factor that controls the protein folding would be the changes in the instructions in gene may result in the changes in the structure of the protein or the way it folds. Next, in our body, we have a type of protein called chaperone proteins that help in folding new proteins and sometimes may also correct any misfolded proteins in our body. You may wonder what happens if proteins do get misfolded in our body. Misfolded proteins can sometimes lead to diseases such as Alzheimer's disease or cystic fibrosis in our body. And with that being said, that would be the end of this video for protein. Thank you everyone for spending your time watching this video. We really hope it would be helpful for you. If you like this content and want more, do like, share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to hit the bell icon guys for more videos in future. Thank you and take care. Goodbye.